Well, in modern times, syndication has been the lifeblood of Australian racing. And one company with their famous purple with the white stars and cap have been right at the front of that queue, winning some of the classic races in Australia, including the Golden Slipper. We're going to chat to the lady that formed this company of star thoroughbreds. Today we're spending time with Denise Martin. Where did it, uh, where did it start for you? Well, look, I grew up in Tassie and my parents are still uh, holding the fort down there. Uh, my brother-in-law, Barry Campbell, trains in Tassie. And so that's, I guess, where I you know, have my roots now. Yeah. If I talk about going home for Christmas, it's going home to Tassie. Uh, but I left the state very early and went to England and started quite by chance an international hotel career that took me to a lot of parts of Europe and to South Africa and back to Australia. And about 18 years ago, 19 years ago, I was in Melbourne, a very famous hotel called The Regent, 50-storey yeah. hotel in Collins Street. And one day I thought, it's about time to start my own business. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I thought horse, race, horse racing sounded good. I'd known Gay Waterhouse from when I'd worked in Sydney. Right. So I picked up the phone and said, why don't you come and stay at my hotel in Melbourne and we'll talk about racing together. Uh, and working together, well, you don't need to suggest anything to Gay twice. <laughs> so 19 years on, here we are, and Star Thoroughbreds was established in 1994. Okay, so what set you apart from the others? Because there's been a lot of syndication businesses out there, and they all do it very differently. They, you seem to do it in a unique way. Well, look, clearly, the special thing for us is that Star is aligned to Gay. Yeah. And we have a unique relationship, Gay uh, has Tullock Lodge, she has her most famous stables, she's the great trainer, Hall of Fame trainer. My business operates exclusively with Gay and she's a guiding light and I would not be where I am today and neither would Star without her assistance and guidance. She selects the horses. Yep. Ultimately, I have to decide whether I want to buy them yep. because Gay will give me a short list of yearlings at the various sales mm -hmm. uh, just to allow me to review the recommendations and then ultimately I have to decide yes or no. There have been some classic uh, should have and might have been and what, what I missed out on including Dance Hero and Accelerator yeah. but, but by and large we've got it right a good part of the time. What was your first good horse? I suppose the first major horse that Star syndicated was a Group 1 winning filly called Danglissa. Mm. She won the Flight Stakes, she won the Princess Series. I bought her at Magic Millions for only 40,000. Uh, in those days, six owners uh, owned the filly because way back in the late 90s, that was the norm, not ten owners as now. And those people just had the right of their lives. She ran in the wakeful on Derby Day and in the following autumn, she won the Queen of the Turf. Yeah. And they sold her for huge money. Uh, to, to Jerry Harvey as a broodmare. That's fantastic. I think she won 865000 and yeah. then you sold her for you know 650000 mm. as well. Great success stories. And the owners involved with that horse, do they stay as long-term clients for you from moving forward? Most have, yes. They've had horses for years. Yeah. Some have been successful since. Some replay the Princess Series races and say, when are we going to get another one like that? <laughs> I said, you've got to keep trying. How, how do you go about um, setting up for the for the for the yearling season if you like do you set a budget of what you want to achieve and is there a budget per horse H how do you go about planning I send the trainer off to the studs to do all the work yeah <laughs> and she <laughs> does that yeah and then I go to the sales about a week to ten days before the sales commences yep. and by that time Gay and her team have seen all the main yearlings at all the major studs wherever they, they're placed in any sale. Correct, yeah. And Gay will really pretty much determine which horses she wants to, to train. Yep. And that's the key criteria for me. Which of the horses Gay wants to train? Yep. My budget is anywhere from about 50,000 to 180, 200 maximum. Yep. And then I put the horses into 10 shares. Okay. But have you, do you retain a share at no. any? No. You've been tempted to do that? Oh, a few times. A yeah. um, couple of times over the years I've really liked horses. Yeah. In fact, I tell the funny story of um, Gay's great friend and friend of mine, Leah Stracy, and I were at the Magic Million sales the yeah. year I bought Thesio, what yeah. became Thesio. And Gay had originally had the, the cult knocked down to him on the night session of Magic Millions. And a couple of years before, she'd recommended I buy what became Dance Hero. Yep. And I said, oh, I don't want to buy a Dan Zero Colt. I, I don't even like him. He's got a Roman nose and he's that very light-coloured bay colour. Yep. And Gay said, he's a lovely Colt, go and buy him. And I said, no. He turned out to be a $90,000 purchase. And at that time, I wasn't spending $90,000 right, on my yeah. horses. So I said, no. Well, of course, he want, went on to be 
Triple Crown winner, he won the Magic Minion to Golden Slipper and just about everything. And I thought, you need to just have a, a rethink here because maybe it's, it's time to, to change your thinking and to take stock a bit, here, a bit here because maybe you've got to up that price a bit. So I'd said to Gay, I've made an executive decision as the sole owner of, of uh, Star Thoroughbreds, I'm going to go to the sales this year and if necessary, I'll spend 100000 on a yearling. So Gay had bought mm. the Dane Wynn Colt on the Saturday session of Magic Minions. And I said, I don't want to buy a Dane Wynn Colt, Gay. Get serious. And we had a film in Louise moment, you know. <laughs> and I said, you know I like to buy what I want to buy. She said, well, I'm telling you, it's a lovely Colt. And I suddenly clicked and I thought, this is very reminiscent of what became Dance Zero with the Dan Zero Colt. Yeah. So I said to Leah Stracy, come with me, let's have a look at this Colt. He was consigned by Emirates. Yep. Yeah. And he came out of the box and I just loved him. Yep. He was just a lovely walking colt. He wasn't very big, but he was just a beautiful horse. And I said, how much was he? Because he was, he'd already gone through the ring, 120. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to spend that much on my horses. No, I am going to. I love this horse. So I bought him. And a few people came and said, I'll buy him. And I said, well, look, he's a colt for the thinking man. Mm. He was one of three yearlings, two-year-olds that year, that Gay had trial in the official two-year-old barrier trials. Yep. So Leah and I had seen him as a yearling, and I'd said to Leah, I love this colt. If you take half, I'll take half, and we'll keep him ourselves. She said, I'll check with my mm. husband. He said, no, the sale didn't happen, and he was bought by ten people who had the right of their lives. Oh, and I should have been one of them. You should have been one of them. <laughs> he was just... The thing that I loved about this, you know, he was so tough. He won five group ones. Was there any in particular that really stand out as, gee, that was, a, that was the particular highlight or that was the best he, that he ever went? Well, I think the McKinnon on Derby Day, to win a group one on Derby Day is special. You want to be there. Uh, you know, you've got a, a, a crowd of 100,000 people yeah. supporting you and a global audience of I don't know how many million. That was fantastic. The following year, we thought he'd won the Australian Cup. And so did all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and we sat there going up like firecrackers, going off like firecrackers. And I said to David Hayes years ago, I've never seen a photograph of that Australian Cup where Cesio doesn't have his nose in front. Do you have one where your horse is in front? Because I want to see it. <laughs> Of course, anyway. he was blazed right on the line by Nick and Hero. Absolutely. Uh, super, super horse. You, you must have a, a, a world uh, record for being a syndication company or a public listed syndication company that uh, Quinella a, a big group one. Thessio, bank robber. But I think straight away, oh, congratulations, Denise. But there's actually two, two different sets of owners there totally. that you have to look after. Totally. Absolutely. Well, at the top of the rise, Peter Robel was right at the bank robber. He kicked away. And I said to Gay, He'll win this. He's got the better turn of foot. They won't catch him. And at that time, they said, the other horse is just getting wound up. And I said, what other horse? She said, yours. You're not watching. I said, Cezio, right. And of course, they quinelled it. Well, I think the two sets of owners took the entire seating area where the owners yeah. normally sit at Randwick and just mayhem erupted. And everybody was elated. Two really good horses. It must have been... Uh tough to eventually you know retire him and I mean he was so good for the owners and yes. it was such a good ride and and they would have bonded as, as a group mm. well he's got a great life now he's down at Bowral right. at Two Mile Lodge with Kim and Ryan Faulkner and only last week Kim sent me photographs of his first equestrian event Fantastic. he's now um, a jumper she said he doesn't like the dressage much but he loves the jumps so I said you're not taking him to Warrnambool <laughs> <laughs> Well, he, he was a tough gelding. Tell us about the Sebring story because I think it's the dream of every owner, isn't it, to have an unbelievable two-year-old and then to, yes. to sell it to a big stud. He goes, there's a very nice more than ready colt that George Altamonte has that's a pass-in. Why don't you go and talk to George and see if you can, you know, can complete a deal? We eventually agreed on 130. And then I couldn't sell him. Nobody wanted him. Right. So I took him off the market. He was on the market for three months. And I put him back on the market at the beginning of August. And that year, 2007, equine influenza hit Sydney. Mm. And I thought, now nobody will want him because not only was racing out of favour in New South Wales, the Pope was coming to Sydney the following uh, June and Ram was closed for, for three months. So the only news about racing was all bad news. Yeah. Anyway, Gay and I decided that the only way to offer this cult was to talk to all of the thinking people we knew. Mm. So you knew if you got a call from me, you were thought to be a thinking person. <laughs> 
we took about 30 people over that time frame right. to lunch yep. and they bought shares in different horses and that's how Sebring was sold. So those owners who eventually sold him for a large sum of money now reflect on those restaurants and said, I didn't know what I was getting into. And I said, yes, but it was life changing. <laughs> it was life changing. An unbelievable gold slipper. Uh, Von Costa the Hero, of course Sebring missed the start. Von Costa the Hero coming around the outside, looks like he'd hit the front, and then Sebring up on the inside. He was last out, and I thought, oh no, our best chance is another Belle du Jour, hopefully. I don't know whether that, that will happen twice. And then, then very cleverly just decided to wend his way through the field. The opening came, and when we got right to the line, Gay turned round and said, you've won the slipper and she hugged me and we both cried yeah. and that's all I remember <laughs> and, and then he became such a valuable valuable mm. colt you just uh, you raced him again he won again but then it was time yes you, you have to you have to sell him he's just worth so much money well we had this vision of going to Ascot and the owners and I had discussed it and we were going to get the purple and white stars bus yeah but when he became such a valuable colt they elected to sell him to stud and he's very happy at Widden. They've done a remarkable yeah. job. The horse looks in outstanding order and his yearlings have been selling very well and I've been able to secure a few of them. And where would you come up with the colours? Well, they originally Gay's colours. Right. And when I started my business, Gay yep. said, you've got star thoroughbreds, purple and white stars colours, you take them over, they're yours. So that's where the colours came from. Uh, Take us through the uh, Magic Millions for this year, and, and I can imagine the, the pressure that Gay was under when your horse, uh, Dry Fontaine, got the uh, race on protest. Must have been a, a tough scenario for her. She's trained first and second across the line, but uh, the jockey wants to protest, and uh, well, the rest is now history. You've got the race. Oh, it was amazing. There was a bit of, you know, toing and froing. Anyway, she got up on the pace, but Nash very cleverly got inside, and he you know he had the inside running as it were mm. so when they got to the line i hadn't realized that no looking back had come so far out into the middle of the track and as gay and i were walking downstairs i said great quinella she's a wonderful filly no looking back i'm delighted and we were really happy that we'd yeah. second as we were walking down the stairs one of the patrons whom we didn't know said there'll be more to this he's come out on you four or five horses I didn't even understand you know, what that was about. It was a very difficult day all round, but at the end of the day, on a race course, the stewards make the decision and you, you must live with that. And as I said at the time, I didn't want to win the race in that fashion and neither did the Drefontaine owners, but the decision was made and we wanted to enjoy the elation of the moment, and we did, well and truly. Your relationship with Gay seems so unique. You've described it as Thelma and Louise. I know. Do you, do you ever fight? Oh, not much. We You're like sisters, eh? No, look, we, we're very like-minded people, yep. and we've worked together a long time, um, and I understand her thinking, and she understands mine, and we just get on very well. I mean, we have our separate lives, but mm. as business associates and, and good friends, we respect that. Um, occasionally I'll say to her, I want you to do such and such. I don't want to. Yes, just do it. And I always say, think of the ad for shoes. Your dad used to say me meeting Nike, just do it. Okay. And look, I think once or twice in 19 years of working together, you know, we've had yeah. words about something. But Gay's wonderful. She just forgets things and moves right along. And she's a great teacher in that way. So, uh, no, we, we get on pretty well. I asked Gay um, about Star Thoroughbreds and what it's done for her business and, and you know, what she thinks of Star Thoroughbreds. And, I thought she summed it up beautifully, the sport of kings made available for, for everyone. Yes. Well, that's what it's about. I mean, if you go through the horses that we've sold over the years, there are some great stories. Uh, Dre Fontaine's owned by wonderful people. Uh, one man who lives on the south coast of New South Wales lost his wife a couple of years ago, and he bought a share. In the, he, he would visit the hospital at Randwick to see her. When she passed away, he thought, I'm going to have a share in a horse. Yeah. And he says to me all the time, you'll never know what this has done for me. We have a Qantas pilot who lives out at Dubbo. Yeah. And uh, he and his family, you know, come to Sydney to see the horse. I always say to him, please concentrate on the cockpit. Please do not be concentrating on the form guy. <laughs> I want to know that when I'm travelling overseas, I'm quite safe. <laughs> So they're great people and they just, they bond and they become friends and as you said before, for many people it's life changing. Yeah.